This is the first in a series of quick videos about what I do after I print a woodcut. So here I have a print from my woodcut graphic novel, Solitude. And I've printed it here, and now there's just a few things I need to do before it is ready for exhibition. So firstly, when I print, I usually, if, if it's a one color print, I don't make a jig and measure out the registration for the paper ahead of time. I just get my paper a little bit bigger than it needs to be, and then I trim it down after the fact. I, I find this is, there's fewer mistakes if I do this, and just for the way that I do printing, it uh, much easier for me. And the leftover paper is not too much. It's, um, it's large enough, I can use it for all kinds of different things. So, first of all, I want to make it one and a half centimeters on the sides and the top, and I want to make it two centimeters on the bottom. And so traditionally in printmaking, the bottom border is larger because that's where you write down the title and the edition information and you sign your name. So you leave a little extra space there uh, so that it you have more room to write that stuff in it and it just looks better. So I'll flip my paper over to the back and I want to measure out one and a half centimeters on the top, on the sides, and two centimeters on the bottom. And for most paper, you can see through it pretty well. For thicker papers, you might need to use a light table, or you can just hold it up to the window or hold it up to the light. And all you have to do is find the edge of your print. Certain prints, like if the very top edge is all white, once in a while there's a print with the top is all like the sky or something, uh, you need to measure the bottom side and then do a little bit of math to figure out how much space you'll want. And then you can just measure the whole thing across. If you don't have a solid line, measure from the block. And for choosing your size of your borders, it's all personal taste, I think. And I think if you're going to frame something or mat something, that might affect your decision. Or if you want to show your prints unframed, then it might leave a little more space. But not necessarily. It's all personal aesthetic. So I put two marks on each side, and I just take the ruler, and this works with, with uh, most any kind of ruler. Sharper edge, uh, I usually prefer, but I, I also do this with a plastic ruler. Now you just want to make sure that you line it up carefully and you press down with your uh, non-dominant hand, I suppose. Press down so that things don't slide around. You pick up the corner here, just tear it like this. Usually when I tear it, I try to think about which paper scraps will be best. So if, if I have a bigger piece, usually the borders are a little bit larger and I have um, bigger pieces. So I use them for flashcards, I use them for notes, things like that. And so I usually try to preserve my more usable sizes, and then the little bits like this, can't really use them for much. So again, hold it very, very stable, and kind of pull up, and I pull in just a little bit, seems to work best. And I go about halfway and then move my hand down the ruler. So the reason, Traditionally, that you would tear your paper instead of cutting it. It's because the handmade paper has a really beautiful edge that is called a deckled edge. So it's got this kind of nice wavy bit to it. So if you ever bought really fancy paper, it has this kind of, the edge is not a sliced cut. And so to mimic the deckle, Usually you will tear your paper. You prefer a really sharp edge to it. Again, personal aesthetic. Then you would do the same thing as I'm doing now, but instead of tearing it, cut it with an X-Acto knife. 
but I prefer it with a nice speckled edge. Here's the print. It looks much better now. See this edge here, just a little bit, a little bit more interesting to look at. I also like how, so the, the aesthetic of a woodcut is generally a bit rough and sort of natural. So I kind of like that natural kind of the, the conversation between edge of the paper and the print. Uh, one other thing about tearing it down, I always do uh, the back. And the reason for that is you can see, hopefully, here, there's a little lip. And it doesn't look as good from the back as from the front. You can sort of see the indentation where the ruler was. And I hope you can make that out along the edge. Just on the inside of the fuzz, there's a, a little bump. It doesn't look so great on the back side. So on the front side, it is, it is not there at all. So always remember to, to tear your paper down on the back. And if you're preparing your paper before you're printing, so if you tear it down to this size and you have a, a way set up where you, you tear your paper down first and then you print after, very important to make sure that you know which side you're tearing and which side you're putting on the block. So I've definitely made that mistake before. And it's not wonderful. So that's part one of post-production. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to clean up any ink errors on your print. And in the last part, I will talk about the signing and numbering conventions. Thank you for watching.